everyone. My name is Allie Clement. I'm with CoStar Group. I'll share a little bit about CoStar Group tonight, but I think I want to focus majority of our conversation on the STAR method and preparing for interviews. So you know, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to ask some questions throughout. I'd much rather have a conversation as opposed to talk at you for 45 minutes. But y'all feel free to interrupt me with any questions throughout this presentation. Um, just a quick thing about CoStar Group and uh, um, some information about us. If you are interested in commercial real estate, data analytics, and technology companies, that's what we do. Um, we are a commercial real estate data analytics company. So we house um, about 20 different brands under the CoStar umbrella where we have all the research and data accompanying commercial real estate properties. We just bridged into the residential side with homes.com. So a quick look at our um, brand preview, but CoStar, the being the flagship product that one and flew is the largest CRE information and analytics marketplace. So kind of like the Google of commercial real estate for agents, brokers, and lenders. <clears throat> apartments.com, I'm sure most of you all have heard of apartments.com. If you've ever just done your Google of Blacksburg Apartments, that's gonna be your sponsored page that comes up. Um, Flipnet, um, one of the equivalents to an apartments.com for commercial spaces where you can find office spaces. Homes.com just took number two behind Zillow in residential, um, residential marketplaces. So we're really excited about that. But just a look at some of what we do, um, but so much more. Before we dive right into this, because um, we are going to focus on the STAR method, but I love to lay the groundwork for, you know, landing an interview and the job search in general. Um, your landing an interview is so multi-pronged, you can spend probably an hour on each of these bullets right here. Um, but like I said, today we're focusing on that interview portion and a little bit of this research portion. Um, but your resume, you can spend so much time on your resume, we could talk for days about your resume. Um, I'll put some high points on here of ways to really make sure that you're tailoring your resume towards your specific audience. Your research, I'm going to talk a little bit about research today and how that should accompany every piece of your interview. Resilience, I put this one up here. I know we're not going to talk about it much, but the job search, the interview process, preparation, it takes time. So really committing to the process, committing to having patience, and recognizing that you're not the ideal candidate for everyone. And there, you know, that's part of the process too, that you're going to apply to so many different jobs and you may not get every interview or opportunity ahead of you. That's not anything against you. It's a, there's a lot of candidates out there and we're trying to, you know, make sure we make connections with each of them. And lastly, resources. So you got a great career center with Abby and Hannah and Jen and Maverick. I'm trying to give them all a shout out. Um, but you also have um, so many resources that come with that. So like this week being interview week, you have your career center that pays for you several subscriptions to specific um, resources like interview stream, handshake, careerspot.com. So lots of different things that you get access to with your student fees. So I highly recommend taking advantage of those. To my folks in the Zoom, you're also welcome to put things in the chat as we go about this. We do have a few activities that I know might be a little weird with our hybrid situation. Um, but starting with doing your research, where do we want to hit high points on here? And when you're preparing for an interview, please drop some things in the chat. Please shout out some things in the room. When you're preparing for an interview, what types of things should you be researching prior to your interview? I'm going to open up my chat box, but anyone in the room want to answer that first? Hey, come on in. Uh, like an overall mission statement of the company. Overall mission statement. Yep, we got someone in the chat saying the company. Yep. What else? Job description. Job description, yes. Possible interviewers. Possible interviewers, love that. Values, culture, yes, Greg and Emma in the chat. Requirements. Requirements, yeah, just having like the basic qualifications, make sure you're ready to talk about those. Job specifications, yep, Andrew. I'll give it one more second. I'm CEO, sure, yeah. See if you got any connections with CEO. Like sometimes we've had. Um, some folks come in for interviews, whether it be like our larger power day or their interns, and they're hanging out in the elevator with the CEO and might not even realize it. So being able to recognize those faces can definitely go a long way. All right, the things that I list on here, I think we've hit most of them. You should start by researching the mission, company, and values. So one of your ultimate questions is, 
um, your first interview question is going to be, tell me about yourself and why you want to work for CoStar or why you want to work for my company. That's when you should have some sort of elevator pitch there that talks about who you are, where you see the connection to the job description or where you see the connection to the overall company culture and be able to talk about that. So be able to say, I noticed that CoStar is really invested in the Richmond, Virginia area. They're really putting a lot of work into building out their connections with college campuses. I'm really interested in residential and commercial real estate. Tell me something. Tell me something that shows that you've done the research for my company or the company that you're interviewing with. Next is researching recent news articles. So this is a one that I don't think gets talked about a lot, but if you're ever interested and really want to impress who you're talking to, go look at what that company's proud of. So what I would suggest is when you're looking at mission and values, go also see like what's the recent news and they'll usually have a tab on their website that has, you know, co-star in the news or recent articles or their LinkedIn will have some feed there. Um, so look in and see like what's in the recent, you know, what are they excited about? What are they bragging about? And what are they saying about it? Because that can really be a great conversation starter. For us, for example, we just hit, like I said, that number two spot behind Zillow, but we had one billion, one billion unique users, 100 million, sorry, there we go. 100 million unique users on homes.com. So that was a huge milestone for us that we had didn't even think we were gonna hit within a year. So seeing you know, what that company is proud of, and that's an example there. Someone said it in the room, but seeing who you're interviewing with. So I highly recommend using LinkedIn to connect with interviewers, see if there's any alumni working at that company, anyone who's recently graduated from Virginia Tech, um, and then jotting down them, adding them on LinkedIn, sending them a message like, hey, I have an upcoming interview. Mind if we hop on the call so I can ask you a few questions in preparation. Great ways to get prepared for your interview. And what I always say is when you're connecting with alumni, especially Virginia Tech alumni, people love to talk about themselves. People will easily answer your questions and tell you, you know, what they love about their job, why you think they think you should work there. And then what they're gonna do is be like, I just met Brad Smith in this phone call and ping that over to the campus recruiter who's about to interview them. You know, like make those connections and really leverage those opportunities ahead of you. Draft each question for each, draft questions for each interviewer. So when you go into an interview, whether it be virtual or in person, have a list of questions that you want to ask. Sometimes your questions will get answered in those initial introductions of like who they are, what they do, you know, a little bit about the job. So have some backups, have some more pointed questions in there. And it's okay if you're asking the same questions to each interviewer, but just don't be the person that says, actually, I don't have any questions. Actually, you've answered them all. Come up with something. There we go, thank you. <laughs> um, connect with your recruiter. So your recruiter's job is to hopefully get you hired. It's part of our, you know, what we're aiming to do is to bring in high quality talent and listen to those to our hiring managers. So prior to your interview, you should ask your recruiter, hey, I'm interviewing with Robert on Tuesday. I see that you set that up, thanks so much. Do you mind if we hop on a call and I ask you some questions on how to prepare? Your recruiter wants to help you prepare. And that's something that we at CoStar build into our interview process. So as we schedule your interview, I'll, I'll say, hey, you're gonna meet with this person. This is what this person's job is at CoStar. This is the type of thing that they focus on in their interview. It's not like cheat code or anything. It's really to help you out because this is stuff that you know. This is stuff that you're prepared to answer by giving you a leg up in those conversations. So use your recruiter to your, to your advantage. And lastly, career services that I've already talked about. Um, anything that I'm missing from this list? I see some folks taking notes. Uh, anyone online or in the person, you're welcome to like, take pictures of the slides. I'm happy to share those too and send them to Abby as well. But anything we're missing or any questions? And I'm a little stuffy, so I use this as my piece of water. All right, we're going to move on. Next phase of your preparation for this interview, start to differentiate your skills and interests. I have a list up here of how I see these two things as different, but when you're approaching someone at a career fair, someone for this first handshake of who you are, or tell me about yourself and why you wanna work for CoStar, I hope you're really able to speak to what skills you're bringing to the table and what interests you have as they relate to this company. So what I mean by this is, Let's see, what kind of majors do we have in the room? BIT. BIT, perfect. What, what kind of focus do you have? 
uh, operations supply chain. Operations. So I know a little bit more about cyber, but so I might focus on that one. I was hoping yeah. it was cyber. Um, so let's say BIT cybersecurity, we actually have a full time role posted for this right now. So if anyone wants to check it out, we got that going on. What I would love is if you make it to an interview in, in a stage like this to be able to say, I see that you're looking for someone who has had three to six months of prior um, experience in an IT role. Here's what I did. I really value that CoStar is looking for people who want to be continuous learners. You can find all of that on our um, job description and our mission and values. So you can kind of spit some of those things out, but be able to connect your interests and values to the skills that you have and what you want to do. Um, do we have questions about this? Am I making some sense here? Online, how are we doing? Questions about skills and interests and how to really incorporate those into your um, interview. What I'm getting at here is the self-awareness piece, really being able to build in that personality and, and who you are and what you're bringing to the table. So, you know, taking some time, what I would recommend is taking some time to answer these questions for yourself for any interview. All right, the STAR method, where we're gonna spend the bulk of our time, um, but situation, task, action, and results. So I have our definitions up here. Um, feel free to screenshot them. I mean, you can find these definitions anywhere. What I would rather do is focus on the why behind the STAR method, and then we're going to do some practice. Um, so when it comes to the situation task sections, I like to say um, those two are lay in the groundwork. Lay enough context for your interviewer to just understand what you're getting at. I want you to spend the bulk of your conversation in the action and result portions of your STAR method. So I want to know what you did. Did you go above and beyond? What steps did you take? And then I want another result. So if you're able to quantify anything, if you're able to put any numbers to, you know, we saw this increase as a result, we got this grade, we were able to get this sort of profit margin on our project. Really be able to put those um, numbers to it is where I would love to see the bulk of your time spent in a STAR method answer. Situation and task should be brief. It should be, you know, that groundwork foundation. So your interviewer understands the situation. What I don't want you to do, and what will typically happen, um, you'll get a question, and I think my next example is this, is like, tell me about a time that you had to adapt quickly to change. What did you do and how did you approach it? A lot of times people will hear that latter half of the question, and we're essentially outlining the STAR method in a question like that. So you get a lot of questions that outline it, and then students skip to the last part and skip this like situation and task section. So they're not focused on, you know, giving the interviewer some, some context to the um, conversation. And they're really jumping right into, well, it was a perfect group and um, we didn't get a really great grade, but we got some good feedback. So we were able to just, you know, take that and pivot and do a, a correction and make a good grade in, in, the, re in the edit. Um, but you didn't tell me the project, you didn't tell me the group, you didn't tell me what your role was. So take some time, outline your answers, and really think through how to present a thoughtful response here. Questions as we lay this groundwork. All right. But the last thing I want to say here is when it comes to the task and action sections, you know, what was your role and how did you carry out the tasks? It's focused on you. So you will get a lot of questions around being a part of a team, being in a group, you know, facing conflict. Um, what I need you to focus on is you and taking ownership over that. An interview is about you and you should be bragging on yourself. So instead of the we language, use a lot of I language and taking ownership over the, the task and the action. There's a lot of things happening in group dynamics, so being able to differentiate your part from others without bashing others is going to go a long way. All right. Let's practice our STAR method. So my, and this was my example earlier, tell me about a time when you had to adapt quickly to change. We have some that we're going to do as um, small groups, but my example for these purposes, um, and it was trying to move my chat box, I was a member of a case study group that was scheduled to present at a conference in front of my peers, academic advisors, and a panel of judges. The group had two members, and my partner was suddenly sick the morning of the presentation. We had spent several weeks preparing for the competition, so I had to adapt quickly in order to participate. This was also my first time public speaking, so that was an added challenge. Situation. This is what's happening. This is what um, arose as part of this conversation. 
My task, so knowing he was sick and couldn't present our case competition, I had to think of a way to incorporate his work on the project into mine and then needed to prepare for the solo conversation or the solo presentation. That's what I had to do, outlining what has to happen to be successful here. Um, action. So I started by asking him to Zoom with me to discuss his specific points in the presentation. I then had to make sure it was okay with the competition coordinator that only one person was going to present our case. I have a few hours for the, before the competition, so I spent some time studying my notes, practicing my case in front of my roommate, and preparing for panel questions. So right here, they're taking the, the steps that they did to prepare and then the steps that they, they got from that preparation. So not only are they having those conversations with a teammate to get as much information as possible, they're taking those steps to be as prepared as possible. And then lastly, um, I was able to prepare enough to present at the competition. I was still nervous, but was able to complete the presentation and answer all the judges' questions with data-driven points. Unfortunately, I didn't place in the competition, but I got great feedback from the judges and some areas of improvement. While ideally my partner would have presented with me, this was a great opportunity to push my comfort zone and adapt to change. So I wrote this answer. <laughs> this is not a very creative answer, but I could have written it as if like they won the competition. This person like was amazing. They did it alone. They didn't need a partner. What I wanted to also focus on is that all of your answers and your results don't have to be that you won, that you got an A, that you um, had a perfect response rate or something. It doesn't have to be positive. And if it's not positive, you should be spinning it to what you learned as a result. So taking any of those quantifiable numbers that um, come with this situation and spinning it in that positive direction. So hopefully that's helpful for y'all. We'll call it y'all. I will share one for an example. That way, um, kind of have something to go off of. Um, so let's see. One of my my first job after college, I worked in a nonprofit space serving um, the Southwest Virginia area, where um, the FAFSA. Hopefully, you've all done your FAFSA. It opened October first. <laughs> um, was the um, it's a key indicator of a student going to college, being able to fill out a FAFSA and get that done correctly is a direct connection to enrolling in college. So our school was identified as a school that had low FAFSA numbers. So there was a statewide competition to get the FAFSA completed. Um, my role as the college advisor was to take that that challenge on, and we were the top percentage in the state two years in a row to get the FAFSA completed across an underrepresented population. Um, so what I could do and what I cannot remember this day and age are the exact numbers associated with the, those that winning. But what I'm getting at is laying out the, the challenge in front of you, what you took on and why that was your goal, and then sharing the results. So that was a fun one to um, be able to brag about what I was interviewing for grad schools um, after, after this role. All right, y'all, some things to prepare for in your interview prep. This sounds more of y'all's alley. No one wants to unmute with me today. <laughs> um, but some questions that you should obviously, you should be expecting these in almost every interview or some iteration of these. So tell me about yourself. This is your elevator pitch in connection with what you see and what you're liking about that company. Why are you interested in this role? What skills and experiences have prepared you for this role? This type of question, I want you to go beyond your major. I want you to say, you know, for the BIT majors or cyber roles that we'll be looking for lately, um, you don't want to just say, I'm a BIT cyber major. I, I've been studying, I've been interested in threat assessment and software development as it relates to cybersecurity. Tell me what you've done that's caused those interests and what you've done beyond that. And then lastly, tell me about a time when you successfully worked on a team to achieve a goal. What was your role and what were your outcomes? We're always asking team-oriented questions, and I would argue that most companies are, to really get a sense of how you're going to communicate with your teammates, how you're going to communicate with your manager, and making sure that you're not going to sit and have a problem in front of you and be a silent sufferer. So a good example of this, um, our software development team, we do have some folks that will ask a very, um, what will seem like a random, unrelated question, but it'll be something around like, tell me how you would move Mount Everest. Like that might be your question. And essentially your answer, you're gonna to start to break it down into smaller problems. You're gonna, you know, maybe get some excavators, maybe you do this, maybe you get some funding around this. Um, but we're really trying to see how long it takes before you're talking and communicating with the team. Um, so before you, you know, sit there in silence and try to really solve this big 
problem. Talk to someone, talk it out and have conversations around it so that you're being a team player and getting multiple perspectives on your responses. So something I can definitely offer as a piece of advice to you all when you're answering some of your questions around team, uh, team dynamics. Lastly, preparing by recording yourself using your career services tools and asking a friend. So starting point, record yourself. Pull up a Zoom and just record it on your computer and answer some interview questions. It is as simple as that, but that really helps you to see um, what, what you're start, uh, stuttering with and there I go stuttering about it. Um, if you're saying a lot of ums, a lot of likes, if you're using a lot of run on sentences and, say, and finishing a response with, um, and yeah, and that's some, sometimes how people end an interview question, then record yourself. That is the best way to start preparing. Career services tools, there was one I referenced earlier, I think it's called interview stream. I think, Abby, do you remember what it's called? That's right. But it's at the bottom of your career website. So if you type in that you have a finance interview or a software development interview, it'll prompt you some very basic questions that those types of interviews usually entail and it'll record you and it'll give you feedback. So that's something you can do 24 seven and your student fees cover it. And then lastly, asking your friend to practice. That's a great way to get some feedback on the fly. You know, it's gonna be awkward, but really having some of those resources ahead of you. Warm off interviews like I did today. Yeah. Um, do some companies, depending on where you do they have like structured questions that are here? Sometimes. So the question here is, do some companies have some structured interview questions that you can look over to prepare? Um, some companies will, depending on the company. There are some um, accessibility efforts out there to just send you the questions ahead of time, and I've, I've been in some interviews like that myself. Um, there are some questions for my uh, software development behavioral things. We will give them a list of, like, here are some questions you can expect. That we might not ask every one of them. It might be iterations of each of them, but they're going to be similar. So, yes, some companies are going to provide you with at least some of that um, basic understanding. Yeah. Also, is it more common for companies to deliver more structured questions, or is it more like unstructured? Or like I'm gonna say it's more unstructured from from my understanding. There are gonna be some different phases of the interview. Like if you go into a technical interview, that might be very structured. Um, but sometimes it's going to be more conversational. It's going to be some behavioral conversational things where you should be sharing your answer to a response. They might, you know, give you some feedback or chat about it for a bit. But I would say mostly unstructured, 30 minutes to an hour. Um, but that's going to vary. I'm speaking mostly about the post right there. Other questions? Feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, here is where I want us to take some of the conversations that we've had. So around your skills and interests around the STAR method, around some preparation for um, your interview, and start to jot down your answers to these questions. You don't do this now, you can take a picture of the slide at the end. Um, but when it comes to my main thing of like understanding and describing the connection between the job description and your skills. So reviewing that job description and taking inventory of your personal skills and strengths. What are you providing to the company? That's something that before every interview, I would chat out, you know, just jot down my answers there. I would have that on my portfolio or my portfolio when I'm meeting with that interviewer. Knowing the mission and purpose. Why do you want to work there and how do your personal values connect? So at CoStar, we have our values plastered all over the building and that's um, really to, you know, send the message of how these values show up every day. So one of our values is continuous learning, which I referenced. You're seeing that all over our building and you're seeing that on our presentations or in your conversations with your recruiter. If that's a personal value to you, bring that up in your conversation. I'm really looking for a company that really invests in their people, in professional development, in career opportunities. I'm looking to join a company that um, really values entry-level work and, and provides opportunities for upward mobility. So tell me about that and tell me how you see that in connection with what you're doing. Career fairs, who did you meet on campus and what was your conversation like? So you all are meeting me today virtually or in person. Um, if you're ever interviewing for CoStar, say that you met me or you know whoever else you're meeting on campus in the atrium, at info sessions, whatever. Those are your connections to so then you know add me on LinkedIn, add other folks on LinkedIn and say, great meeting you, great workshop, would love to connect about future opportunities. That's an awesome way to make yourself known in that interview process. Leveraging LinkedIn, who's interviewing, what is their background? So 
whenever you do get that scheduled interview, do your creeping, do your like online searches to see what that person has accomplished in their lifetime and see, you know, where are their common points, where are their connection points that you could bring up um, and jot down a question for that particular interviewer. BT alumni, so I've already talked about this one a little bit, but who can you connect with prior to? I love um, recommending that you all connect with young alumni. Um, so you're able to even use your career services center there to say like how many people are working for a co-star from here now, any names that you can consider, any, you know, anything there. Look them up on LinkedIn, it's not hard to necessarily find, but I think that's a great way to lay some groundwork there. Um, when we get into, let me make sure I got enough time. Yeah. Okay. So a few tips about preparing for the day of your interview. So virtual or phone interviews, some basics there, but finding a quiet place, checking your technology ahead of time. Um, I do like to focus on this one. I know we're in the world of Zoom, um, but a lot of times we're using Teams or it might be something different, making sure that's working ahead of time um, and making sure your camera's working. We love to see your faces because that's going to have a more personable conversation. Um, so when you're prepared and doing those things ahead of time, it really goes a long way in easing that process for your interviewer. Dress appropriately for virtual interviews. We're not expecting you to be in like business suit or certain tie or anything, but just, you know, upper half looking good, you know, throw on a blazer over a t-shirt or over a, a polo or, you know, ladies making sure your neckline's not too low, just something simple. It doesn't have to be um, professional at all. And then assessing your background. I like to blur my background, doing something, you know, taking, taking inventory of what's in behind you for those virtual interviews. For your in-person interview, review parking and office locations. So always arriving early, your um, interview starts as soon as you walk in the building. So if you're meeting with a administrative assistant up front, if you're saying hello to the parking garage um, person who's letting you in or the security guard, your interview has started. So being early, having you know some time to take in those interactions and being really polite. Um, and then having materials on hand. They're all gonna have access to your resume either virtually or from your recruiter. I still think it's nice, maybe it's old school, to be able to hand that resume across the table and be like, here's a copy for your reference. That's then something for them to jot notes on while you're talking. That's something for them to revisit when you leave the conversation. It's nice to have, not necessarily nice to have though. A notebook and prepared questions. So notebook, um, you have probably noticed if you were kind of writing down your star method answers, it kind of takes some practice to put that into an outline. So if you're ever in an interview and they give you a multi-pronged question that is situational and asking a couple different questions, just pause and say, do you mind if I jot that down for a minute? Do you mind if I make a few notes using your notebook? Any introduction that you make throughout your interview process, whether it's like a handshake in the hallway or you know, a networking event, jotting down who you're meeting with so you can add some LinkedIn invitations at the end and send some thank you notes. And then for anything in-person interview-wise, business professional. So taking a look at what that would entail if you just want to do a quick Google around business professional, but we're always happy to answer some questions. I've had some recruits text me pictures to be like, hey, is this okay to wear? Absolutely. Happy to answer those questions, and I would assume you're recruited, aren't you? Um, some after interview tips, but sending thank you notes. If you don't have everyone's contact information, it's fine. Send it to your recruiter to then forward on your behalf. Check status and follow up and send any sort of like, hey, haven't heard back from you in a week or you know, wondering if you do have a timeline in mind. No problem in asking these types of things. Prepare for negotiation. I'll be happy to answer some questions there, but I think as entry-level talent, focusing on the benefits, think focusing on relocation, and being able to ask questions around what you really need there, and then evaluating your opportunity. I will leave those open because I know people usually have some questions around those, um, but thank you. That kind of concludes the meat of what I wanted to talk about, um, but I'm here for questions. I'm here to um, hopefully... Um, discuss any follow-up there, but thanks for joining this afternoon.